Sunday afternoon, Central European time, around 2.30. I just finished reading Captain Blood, uh, which fits for a few of my challenges. It's number... Oh, geez. It's, uh, I think it's the 14th book in my 100 book challenge. It's uh, the... What month are we in? April selection of Rogers Cheeple Book Club. It is an adventure book, so it's part of Spring into Adventure. adventure. Um, I don't have a lot to say about it. I'm going to try and do this quick. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed reading it. It's a free copy. I like these covers. I like these covers that you get on a lot of the public domain books. It even says they're public domain, I think. Um, on Amazon. I think it was back whenever it was 2010, 2011, whenever Amazon started getting into the ebook business or when the ebook business was created, they put, I don't know if this was an organized uh, thing by Project Gutenberg or if Amazon did it or whatever, but they, they did list a bunch of public domain books in this kind of format, taking them from um, Project Gutenberg. I don't think they consistently do that anymore. All these books you can find in various editions, a lot of 99 cent editions, uh, a lot of um, compilations where, di where different uh, packagers will take a, you know, like a complete uh, Raphael Sabatini kind of thing and, you know, add some value by, by putting in a good table of contents and stuff. They usually have like no extra information, like like I was saying here. Like that is that. It goes right into the contents. No copyright, nothing. So I didn't know when this book was written. I would have guessed. I had to go to Wikipedia and do a little research. I would have guessed this book was written around the late 1890s around the time of the Prisoner of Zenda, and I was wrong. This book was published in 1922. To put that in context, that's 10 years after Tarzan of the Apes was published, 10 or 11 years. Uh, seven years before the Maltese Falcon. It's right in the middle of the Jazz Age. It's a... Um, <clears throat> It's a historical novel set in the time of uh, James II of England, uh, time of a, a, a period called the Monmouth uh, Rebellion, I think. It, the, there's the main character is, is named Peter Blood. When we meet him, he's already a man of action. He's retired to a small town in, in England after a career at sea and in the military and he knows how to fight and he's a doctor and he knows all the stuff. He's already a hero guy. He's winding down his life. He doesn't want anything to do with the political situation. But he gets involved with um, some rebels. Um, you know, he does his duty as a doctor and for that he gets charged with a crime. He gets convicted. He gets sentenced to death. The sentence his death sentence gets commuted to life of servitude. He's put on a boat to Barbados. Uh, he gets there. He's sold into slavery. I'm not doing the whole plot, but I'm just. This is the setup. And then eventually, you know, he takes control of things and he becomes a pirate captain, although kind of a privateer because he really just focuses his piracy on the Spanish, even though his own country, uh, his own adopted country of Great Britain hasn't treated him very well. He, he, really, he leaves the British ships alone and he, and he attacks only the Spanish. He's at war with the governor of the island. Um, these are, this is a, a kind of a workup, if you're familiar with uh, like old science fiction of the 30s, 40s, 50s. Uh, workup is a, a term for, for when a writer would take magazine stories um, individual short stories and then work them up into a novel, for example, like the Foundation books by Asimov were the first three books in the trilogy, or at least the first couple in the trilogy, 
were made up of shorter stories and then smoothed out into a novel. So this is a bit episodic, not really. Uh, it really holds together as a novel. I would give it some stars if I gave out stars. It's, it's, it's worth reading. Um, it's not... I mean, if you've read The Three Musketeers, if you've read The Prisoner of Zenda, if you've read the Hornblower books, Horatio Hornblower books, which come out later, starting in the 30s, various things like that, enjoy that. This is not as good as those. It's still worth reading, though. It's still fun if you like, uh, you know, romantic adventure stories and daring do and... and that kind of thing. So I enjoyed reading it. Uh, I probably would not have read it except for the book club. So I'm grateful for the book club because, you know, like I say, I've got all these things on my Kindle for so long. Uh, what are we at? Um, yeah, I give it mm, 13 out of 17 stars. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> it, there are other books that follow, uh, other stories that follow, and they were also worked up in other volumes. Sabatini's kind of an inter interesting guy. He was of Italian. He was a British writer of Italian extraction. He, like Joseph Conrad, he didn't uh, speak English until his late teens. Although Sabatini was, uh, according to what I've read, he was a polyglot. He spoke about five languages growing up, but um, he didn't learn English till he was eighteen. I think it said seventeen or eighteen. And I think Conrad didn't speak English till he was 19. It's always impressive to me that people can write in a foreign language. Of course, it's not totally unheard of, it, you know. Um, but I, I think it's it's admirable. He's not, you know, he's he's no Joseph Conrad, and he's no um, would I read more books by this author? You ask. I don't know, probably not. Uh, there's a movie, uh, a um, Errol Flynn movie, which I liked a lot as a kid. Uh, maybe I'll try and hunt that down and, and look at it. It's it's a fun book, though. I'm probably making it sound duller than it is. Pick it up if, if you like to read a lot of this stuff. I think there's uh, everything else I've mentioned in this video as I probably like better. And... That'll do it tomorrow. I've got, uh, this is, I've already got one uh, video pre-planned or pre-scheduled for tomorrow, which is another adventure book, a non-fiction adventure book, which I really liked a lot. So you can look for that. I've at, um, and then I, uh, I don't know if I've got any other adventure books scheduled. I'm, for people in April, I'm still reading the um, Elizabeth Gaff Gaskell autobiography of Charlotte Bronte, which I also like a lot. And so I'll keep posting and we'll talk again.